Hey everyone, I'm Kyle and I'm here with another C programming tutorial. This week we're talking about timing control. I hope I didn't get your hopes up too high with the title. We won't be exploring the fourth dimension or any relatively related stuff in this video. We're simply going to be looking at timing commands within C and how we can use time to control the flow and the execution speed of our program and even to help allocate CPU better. So without further ado, let's start learning about time. Let's start talking about time in C. Today's tutorial is going to be very simple and very straightforward and right now I'm resisting with every fiber of my being to stop myself from singing the time song by Pink Floyd because it's stuck in my head. Anyway, in C there are a few different functions that you can use to uh, either measure or read time and, and in different ways too, in different contexts. So there's a function that allows you to read the UTC time which tells you absolute time as in like if you looked at your clock or your watch what time is it right now or you can also get functions that measure uh, say the execution speed of your program which are also useful for different things. Uh, now these functions might vary based on your development environment so the functions that I'm going to show you don't necessarily work in robot C but they're functions for general C programming. So the first one is the aptly named time function and what this does is it reads that UTC clock that started in back in 1970 and it gives you the 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 time right now so like in, in 24 hour format um, in GMT or also known as UTC which is universal core uh, universal time coordinated um, and this this isn't exactly how you would set it up but there are uh, plenty of other tutorials online that'll help you optimize for your specific development environment another one is the the clock function uh, which what that does is it measures the execution this is what allows you to measure the execution speed of a part of your program so how you would do that is you could reset it at one point in the program so it starts from zero and then after whatever amount of time you want to measure you can read that clock and it tells you the amount of milliseconds that have elapsed since you last reset it uh, what this looks like in uh, robot C is you'll have a reset timer um, you'll have a reset timer or sorry it's called clear timer uh, clear timer function right um, and you choose whatever the timer is so T1 for example and that'll that'll clear the timer timer number one and set it to zero and then if I want to later read it uh, read the time that has elapsed what, what I would do then is I would say uh, uh, time one on timer let's say uh, T1 again and that'll give me the amount of time that has elapsed in milliseconds uh, since the program has been executed. Um, and that's uh, pretty much how you would run the execution, uh, measure the execution speed. There's also uh, time functions that allow you to wait a certain amount of time. So if you want uh, there to be a certain amount of latency in your program, uh, what you would do with that is uh, there's again there's different variations of of this command, but the sleep command and this will allow you to choose a number of milliseconds that your robot will sleep for. So for example if I put sleep 1000 this will pause the program for one second and what's important about this is that no CPU power is being used while the robot is sleeping for this one second um, and I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, there's, like I said there's other variations like uh, for example wait one msec um, and that that does the same exact thing as sleep but sleep is generally preferred over this one and like I said it just depends on what kind of development environment you're using robot C will recognize both of these so if you're using it for EV3 that's important to uh, to note now getting back to what I said about the CPU thing really the most important thing we're talking about in this tutorial because you could have gotten any of this from any stack overflow tutorial online uh, one important thing that I want to show you um, relating to the sleep function is that if you're doing some kind of loop so let's say I have a while loop and this will just repeat for infinity and inside of this while loop I have some code that's executing so it's doing something right and it's going to loop for infinity okay so this is fine this is functional this will work but what I strongly strongly recommend you do is that you add uh, a little sleep at the end of your loop some small amount of time that won't affect the operation of your program so usually either 50 or 20 milliseconds is a good amount of time and the reason why I strongly recommend you do this this is a good programming practice uh, because this for this 20 milliseconds there's an amount of time that the CPU won't be doing anything relating to this loop 
because otherwise this loop will end up hogging a whole bunch of your CPU power and if you need your program to do other things um, like for example um, another thing in the program like another task or if your, your program has uh, your robot controller has background operations it needs to attend to it needs to allocate CPU time for that as well so adding a very very short wait uh, at the end of your while loops, something small that won't add too much latency to the loop itself and affect its operation, that allows your program to allocate uh, CPU time for other tasks. And this just in general is a good programming practice. So if you take nothing away, uh, nothing else away from this tutorial today, this is the most important part that I want you to take away. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.